we'll return to this conversation, but let's now talk live to the CEO of Fair Money, personal finance and credit expert Roger G. Wolpe, who joins us this morning. Morning, Roger. Good morning, Christo. Um, so let's talk about Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak at Prime Minister's Questions yesterday. Um, like, is it just me or do, uh, uh, is it just two really, really boring men just making us want to watch paint dry? Absolutely. I mean, it's to think that these are our leaders um, and then Rishi rolls up his sleeves and does a photo op and smiles away and tells us everything is going great. It, it, it's just too much. And, 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 and Starmer has nothing concrete to offer except for this immigration plan. This is kind of like the first concrete proposal they've come up with. Um, well, they're, they're, uh, actually, in fairness to them, and I'm, uh, you know, one of my big criticisms of Labour is that they haven't offered anything <laughs> so far. I mean, literally nothing. Um, nothing. In the last couple of days, we've heard this policy um, that, that will be announced today. Angela Rayner, she gave the policy of rolling back the strike legislation. They said, with, she said, within the first hundred days of a Labour government, yeah, they would yeah. get rid of that minimum service requirement legislation when it comes to strikes. That was the law that was passed the month before last that means that if certain essential services go on strike, there is a minimum service requirement, meaning you can't just completely shut down the railways, you can't just completely shut down various sectors. Now, I think that's a terrible idea, rolling back on that, to be honest. I think that that, that, that you can still have an effective strike while still offering a, a basic level of service. But my point is, at least they're coming up with something. At least they're starting to put clear blue water Perhaps that's the wrong analogy when we're talking about boats, but the, per, at least they're trying to put a distinction between the two main parties. Um, fair point. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're 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 going they're going back towards traditional labour in that suggestion, which I also uh, don't think is a good one. We need a minimum service level, uh, but at least they are trying to put a distinction there. Uh, so that's a, that's a fair point. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 a fiasco. It's just it's just a joke. These people don't look like leaders. Uh, and you'd say that about any of them. Yeah. Um, well, but, I mean, the whole government. There's just there's nobody. What's the solution? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, every I mean, they every day they tell us how well they're doing, and as a consequence, how well we're doing, and everybody can see around them. I mean, nobody is fooled at this point. Um, every day it actually seems to get worse and worse. And we're coming every day closer and closer to a general election. What in the world is going to happen? Are people going to re-elect somebody as as weak as Sunak so that Labour doesn't get in with these sort of policies? Or is it time for a change and Labour should come in? And even with those policies, at least they'll get more done for the common Brit uh, than the Tories, because the Tories are just so out of touch with the 68 million others of us that it's it's unbelievable. They're lost in their Westminster bubble. So one's as bad as the other, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I know that you had a Tony Blair story, and we we, we weren't going to do it, but just one question on, on, on Tony Blair. Um, how great do you believe is the hangover of Tony Blair when it comes to Labour attempting to navigate policies like immigration and asylum? Because I think that people have long memories and I think that what perhaps isn't discussed enough, and that would be if I was a journalist and I was covering this immigration launch today, that the, the very first question I would ask Labour is well, aren't you trying to still clear up the mess from the part of the world that had Tony Blair left alone, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Uh, how, how great is that um, looming over the Labour Party when it comes to policies like this, do you think? Um, I, I don't know how great the hangover is, Christopher. I mean, he's got his fans and he's got his detractors. Uh, but I think more important is how great is his influence today and I think his influence is is growing over the Labour Party, and I, I, I you know, I'm not sure that's a bad thing. 
Um, I think he brings some uh, more of what you were just talking about, some concrete policy and proposals, whereas before there was nothing. Um, and he is, after all, running a, a huge global institute and doing a lot of good around the world in all sorts of areas. I mean, um, you know, he might give them some some good ideas. He might lead them in the right direction. I, 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 I don't think we need to hear any more ideas from Tony Blair. I mean, the only thing he said of any credibility to me lately is that the burden for net zero should not be on the common man or woman and that actually we should be using our influence and our power to try and help China and India reduce their carbon footprint whilst maintaining exactly. their ability to, to have the industrial revolution that, that, that we enjoyed decades ago. That, I actually thought, was, was common sense because yeah. he, he was very fair in saying and very right in saying that, you know, me not using a plastic carrier bag or the poor lady having to, you know, pay £12.50 to leave her driveway, none of that is going to have any kind of impact whatsoever on global emissions because China and yeah. India, I mean, literally, they could, you know, they, they half a day of their emissions... They're, they're spewing it out. Exactly. Yeah. So I thought that was fair, but, but what I'm seeing from Labour when it comes to those kinds of policies doesn't remotely reflect what Tony Blair said about that. So I'm not sure that, that he does have that influence and I'm not sure that uh, it is cutting through, certainly on that particular issue. Um, let's just talk about one other issue that I really was keen to bring up today, and that is the return of hard cash. I'm really surprised by this story, but I'm heartened by it. The rise of contactless card payments has um, meant in the last decade, the number of transactions um, via cash, um, uh, the, the tighter budgets of cost of living mean that people are using more cash, basically. What do you say to that? Well, I mean, as you go down the demogra the economic demographic, uh, poorer people actually do uh, count up piles of cash and leave it in the corner or in the drawer or in an envelope, and, and, and that's how they budget their spending. So a lot of people are using cash, and uh, recent reports have shown that the use of cash has actually risen. Um, uh, it, overall, it's been going down, uh, but it has risen as the cost of living crisis has bitten, and it is expected to decrease again once the cost of living crisis goes away, whenever that may be. Uh, well, I love that story, and I also see it as a, as a form of silent defiance um, th that we're using more cash. Roger, always great to get your insights. Thank you. CEO of Fair Money, personal finance and credit expert. Coming up, well,